Peace, everybody. How are y'all doing? This is Fasting is Life, and I am back again with another awesome video. Shout out to everybody out there who are checking this video right now. I know this is going to be an interesting topic. It may trigger some of you out there, but that's okay. That's why you are here. Before we can get into this topic tonight, please make sure to like and subscribe. You already know. And, uh, you know, click that bell. All right, let's get to this. Today's topic, Pan-Africanism is a New World Order Propaganda. Interesting, isn't it? It's an interesting statement, right? Oh, yeah. And the image you saw there is uh, one of the rend uh, many renditions of the quote-unquote Pan-African flag. And here's the history. Show you different nations where the origin of the flag idea came from. Yeah, and here's another one. And... Uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, I'm showing two different images. Uh, uh, for those of you who are listening, uh, the Pan-African flag is has three color. It has three lines, red, black, and green. So you guys have probably seen it, you know, around your town or online or in the news. And here's another uh, picture showing you the UN flag and the African Union flag, right? And this is why it says the African Union. Let me remove the, the, the bar. It says the African Union, an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa. Right? So now some of you are wondering why, why is fasting saying that Pan-Africanism is a new world order propaganda? I'm saying that because it is. Africa is a continent with many cultures, many nations within. And the idea to make Africa as one as breaking those barriers, it's never going to happen. Now, when I say it's never going to happen is the way they sell Pan-Africanism, it sounds good, but it's not reality. Now, when I say the New World Order, the New World Order agenda is to unite all people under one government. Now, the question is, in that one government, who's going to be ruling it? Because you already know, now everybody is going to have a piece at the table, right? So, if the whole world is under one government, who's going to rule that government? So at the end of the day, it, that shows you right there that under the guise of being one, the people are not going to be one. They're going to be one under somebody else. So you're not one. <laughs> Peep, this is the reality, folks. What makes us different is there's nothing wrong with being different. We should actually embrace it. What makes us all similar? Why? We, because we are mankind. You know, we are men and women, right? But all of us have different, different things that makes us unique. And it, it's there for a purpose. But this, the way they're selling is we need to want to go pull what makes us different and allow us just become one. In oneness. But it sounds good, but the application, it's not going to work. Why? Because people are divided based on culture, ethics, rules and laws, religion, political alliances. That's why Pan-Africanism sounds too good to be true. Because if Africa was quote unquote united, what uh, the UN, 
the African Union has been there for many years, right? Why there's always violence and wars in Africa if we're supposed to be united? And you have various people through our history who are trying to sell the ideology of pan-Africanism. Yes, Africans are spread apart, but the way they sell pan-Africanism, it's too good to be true. Right? That's why I would say, don't look at the message that makes you feel good. Do your research, investigate. Who are those people behind this movement? Why are they promoting it? If you do your investigation very well, pan-Africanism sometimes will ring in your ear like, sounding like communism and Marxism. And I know a lot of people are going to be hearing this. They, they, you know, Some people will not agree. They say, that's wrong, that's wrong, right? Now, let me read you the information that's out there regarding pan-Africanism. What does it say? It says, pan-Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between all indigenous and diaspora ethnic groups of African descent. Based on a common goal dating back to the Atlantic slave trade, the movement extends beyond continental Africans with a substantial support base among the African diasporas in the Americas and Europe. It says Pan-Africanism can be said to have its origin in the struggles of the African people against enslavement and colonization. And this struggle may be traced back for uh, to the first resistance on slave ships, rebellions and suicides through the constant plantation and colonial uprise and the black back to Africa movements of the 19th century, based on the belief that unity is vital to economic, social and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African descent. Now, some people say, wow, that sounds really, really good. It sounds good. Well, guys, the gods who rule this world with their minions, you really think they're going to allow that to happen? Think about it. You really think they're going to allow an agenda that's outside the agenda to come to pass? Do you really think so? Or they're going to allow an agenda to happen that is under their control, under their rules and laws. So, in a clever way, African unity is all leading to what? To the one world order because the main goal of the one world order is all nations throughout the earth to become one under the rules of what the fourth beast i know i'm putting bible stuff here but like i say a lot of people hate the bible they they don't they don't they, they call it you know uh you know some of the people who are pan-african is they say they claim they say oh the bible is the white man book i don't believe in it you know Let's go back to uh, et, et, uh, ethnic uh, uh, roots, uh, ancestors and stuff like that, right? Like this flag right here, I'm going to show you. You got the ink and stuff like that, right? So you have a very strong people who are all about, oh, it doesn't matter. If you're black, we're one, right? And m most of the time it tends to be based on the skin color. It doesn't matter. If you look black, you have dark skin, you have melanin, you have, you one of us, right? And that's why I say <laughs> the danger, because it's very ambiguous, right? Because someone who may be black, but he don't he don't think Pan African. To him, he don't like Pan African. So how can you bring all people under this one analogy when people don't not everybody thinks about that are you gonna force them by force through tyranny how are you gonna go about bringing this ideology to pass because if this was something that everybody wanted it would have been adopted years ago i mean we we 
we quote unquote have the African Union and Africa is still quote unquote not united. We have war breaking out, nations invading each other, civil wars. The UN is right there in the scene doing nothing, right? And they claim to, uh, they call it United Nation. So on one end, they're saying, oh, we, let's all unite, right? Unite under the question people don't ask is unite under what? Under who? Right? Questions, always questions, every movement. What is its purpose? And what is the underlying purpose behind the shadows? There's nothing new under the sun. Africa is a continent with multiple, multiple, multiple cultures. Do you think North America, if they were trying to do the, you think it's going to happen? Unless it's happening under what? The New World Order's way of doing things. They're not going to allow you to go out there on your own little corner, do things outside of the program and benefit from it. It won't happen. How can you have, quote unquote, an African Union when your colonizers, quote unquote, are the overseer, the referee? You're not independent. That's what I say. The quote unquote African Union is a farce. But see, because Pan Africanism relies on emotionalism, they have to get people's emotions worked up so they can side with it. But any smart quote unquote African can see that this, this propaganda is a fairy tale that will never happen. Why? Because not every African out there sees themselves a like, quote unquote African. Yes, they live in the continent of Africa, but how they, they sell the African pan Africanism, they don't see it that way. They'll be like, well, I belong to my nation, my tribe. I don't want this whole thing about all Africa becoming one. No. And that's something the Pan-Africans don't even talk about. They tend to focus more about what we're going to do. This and, and here's another crazy part about it. If you're going to do something, why do you have to tell the world your plans? Since when you've seen the people who rule this world telling you what they're about to do. Watch this. Now, here's the difference between them and the Pan-Africanists. When the, the people who are ruling this world are telling you their plan on what they're going to do, they already did it. By the time they're telling you they're about to do it, they've already done it. Probably years ahead of your time. They're just letting you know we're already they, we are about to do it, but they did it. But the problem with the people who are behind Pan-Africanism, they talk about this grand idea about what we must do, you know, what Africa must do and all that stuff. And they even even put one step in quote unquote their plan. And there's a you know there's a proverb that say when you tell when you say what you're about to do out loud, you're never gonna do it. Why? Because ideas this come in your mind. If you pull it out there, there must be some. It has to come to fruition. But if you say your idea but you don't do it. That energy goes away because you already say what you're gonna do, but you're not doing it. So it's like it's pointless. You must do it, then come and tell people that you are about to do something, even though you already did it. The evidence must be there. And there's a lot of Marxist undertones behind Pan Africanism. And I don't know because you already know we live in a time where social media the media, they're censoring anything that goes against the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the mainstream rhetoric. So this video I'm about to upload, uh, When by the time you hear it, I don't know, because I already know YouTube has been very, very censored. They're censoring my stuff. So we'll see when I upload this, if they're going to flag or say or it's, uh, you know, fake news or, 
they'll flag it probably they'll say something that I'm promoting violent because they've been acting crazy lately. So we shall see what happens when I upload it. But basically, in this from my point of view, understanding the Pan-African movement and how people still talk about it today, to me, it's just another branch of the new world order agenda, the propaganda. And, you know, they need all continents to unite. Why? Because the end game is having all nations on the one. But watch this. When this pandemic happened this year and this whole madness, the shutdown and all that stuff happened, guess what? Every nation in the world was in one accord. They all agree to participate in a shutdown, even places where, quote unquote, didn't have any cases. So you see, they, the New World Order plan will come to pass whether this Pan-Africanism happens or not. And if it does happen, it's not as you think or as they're telling you it's going to happen. It's going to happen the way the gods and the ruler of this world say it should go, not how you want it to go. What makes us different is and unique is good. Whether you're a Caucasian, Asian, of African descent, Native American, Australia, what makes us unique is is good. That's that's what makes this world interesting. Think about this. If all of us were the same, life would be boring. <laughs> we would have nothing interesting because we all doing the same thing. It's the same. We like the same song. We like the same uh, 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 books. Like it, we, life will be there will be nothing to, because everything you're gonna be talking about it's the same thing. That what makes us different is unique. But this is how the 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 the, 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 the ruling in it works: divide and conquer. When they divide us, is so they can conquer. But how we divide it based on our ethics, background, nationalities, and stuff like that, what makes us unique is for a purpose. It's how we keep our foundation. And then as you know, as we come together in one accord, something we have similar, that's what makes us come together. But the new world agenda is to make everything and everyone become one. That's the danger. But guess what, guys? That agenda of the one world order will happen. It, it, for, for those of us who who still alive in a few years, it will come to pass according to Bible prophecy. But it's only going to be for a short time. Why? Because people all realize that it was not as they claim to be. You have to you win in existence right now, and we still have war. We still have violence. So what's going on? I thought the UN was all nations coming together for peace, right? Why would we still have war? That should tell you what the UN is really about. That's my opinion. So uh, I think that was enough rant. <laughs> so guys, all of you out there listening, especially to you Africans who are for Pan-Africanism, what do you think about my opinion that the uh, Pan-Africanism is a one world order agenda? It's a propaganda to get all the Africans in motion, not knowing that they're being led astray towards the one, the, the one world order. So... Uh, feel, I would love to hear the feedback. So don't be shy. I know a lot of you, some of you are there are trigger, and that's okay. It's good to, to get some uh, pushback. So I appreciate uh, those of you who will comment. So thanks again. Please, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more awesome videos that we will have for you in the coming minutes, hours, days. All right, peace. Y'all be safe and have a good night.